Okay. All right. Well, welcome everybody. Welcome, Larise, Sharon, Troy. Um, so, uh, my name is Charlie Wild. I sent emails to all of you. Um, you should recognize my name from an email and messages. Um, and so, I'm your uh, you follow us by the Wild team, the Wild Ch Charlie Angels. That's me. Um, and so, I've been with Pampered Chef a little over a year, and um, and so we've been having a great time. I just moved here to DC, so it's been a little crazy. Um, but I want to welcome you guys, and I was sharing with you that one thing I do like about PC is that you can transition from um, whatever phase of life that you're in. There doesn't have to be one thing all the time. So that's what I'm learning right now myself, is that if you can transition, that PC can go with you to whatever, wherever you need it to be. Um, and so that's awesome. And so I'm so glad that you guys joined uh, Troy's team. So yay, the new team is up and coming. So Troy, tell us how you feel. I'm really excited. So I, um, I'm really excited for our growing team and I'm also really excited for the support that is in place for you guys because, um, because there's, because of technology and because of new ways of doing trainings. Now, now you guys have access to stuff that I didn't have when I joined. So I'm really excited for that and thankful for our leaders who are making this possible. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to see how like, Pampered Chef started as a hobby for me in February, and my husband's going to be getting out of the Army, we think. Um, but with all of this uncertainty going on, um, I really just kind of delved into my business and, and turned it from a hobby into, into a, a real business that's, you know, earning actual, like, significant income. So I'm really excited, and I'm excited that you guys are joining me, and I'm excited to support you guys in doing, doing it doing Pampered Chef for what you want to get out of it because it's different for different people. Okay, great. Awesome, Troy. And so, Troy, you want to go ahead and introduce who else is on the call from your team? Sure. So, um, we have Larice is on the call from Texas, and I met Larice right before she left Korea. Um, and she has a toddler, and she's pregnant with number two. Uh-oh, and Sharon just dropped off. Uh-oh. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, and so, and Larice got excited doing a, um, an online party and decided we're turning her online party into her starter show. Excellent. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome, Larice. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and I know she's going to do great. She's super friendly and fun to be around. And um, and being that you're moving in a new place, I think you were talking about how your having a toddler is getting you out, and having your business is going to do the same thing. It's going to it's going to cause you to put yourself out there in a way that um, that you might avoid. You know what I mean? Like when you first move somewhere and you just want to. Oh my, sorry. And you just and you just want to. Uh, you know, hide under the covers. You're not, it, this is going to give you an opportunity to really put yourself out there and meet, meet new people so that you get connected faster in your new location. Yeah. Yeah. So awesome. So welcome, Larice. Yeah. <laughs> and Sharon. So I met Sharon. She teaches, um, Sharon works, teaches at a university she also uh, does birthing classes. And I met Sharon when I was pregnant with Gabriel here. And, um, and we had an amazing class. And I really liked her. And I was just like, I'm keeping you as a friend. And she's been an expat here in Korea um, for, I think, seven years, Sharon. Is that right? How many? Five and a half. Oh, five and a half. Okay, so five and a half years in Korea. Um, as an American expat, and she just married uh, someone in the Air Force, and so now she has an APO, and she really she doesn't want to teach university anymore, and she really would like to be able to do just birthing and pamper chat. So, so we need to get her on track to really be able to have this be um, more than a hobby and a real business. Okay, awesome. Also well, glad you made it, Sharon. And so tonight, um, uh, we also have Claudia, and so if you should recognize her name, Claudia Bazaar, and she's our advanced director. Um, we're all part of the Bazaar Bullet Train. So Claudia, do you want to introduce yourself? 
Uh, sure. Um, so my name is Claudia. I'm your advanced director. Um, I've been with Pamper Chef for five years. Um, I kind of started to just, you know, get out of the house and then I had two kids while doing Pamper Chef and realized quickly that while I was working full time and putting my kids in daycare, I was making more money doing Pamper Chef on the side than working full time. So, um, I kind of quit my job and now I do Pamper Chef full time basically. Um, so I'm here to support you guys and get you started out and make sure that you guys are going, you know, off to a great start and you get whatever you want out of this business. So we're excited and we're here to help you. So please, if you ever have any questions, like don't feel, feel free to just message me or call me. Um, if you can get a hold of Troy or Charlie, um, we're all here, you know, to help you guys. Excellent. All right. So each of you, whenever you joined, um, you just received an email from me that has gone over a couple of beginning steps for a new consultant. Everyone received that email and that you received from me. Great. And so, um, so that's what tonight, basically, Claudia and I are going over some of those, um, the new consultant strong start. Um, and basically, our proven steps that really are effective to help you start off your business in a strong way that um, if we just follow those steps, sort of like a recipe, when you're cooking, cooking something new. You don't know what to do, you never cook before. Hopefully it turns out, I don't know. So that's what sort of the explosive strong start. Those steps are sort of like a recipe. You follow the recipe and it helps you be successful. And along the way, you gotta tweak it a little bit to be your own. You know, you have a little dab of it, so splash it at. Hey, it's your re recipe. And so it's your, your recipe for success. That's what we are going over with you tonight. So anytime you have questions, um, we'll go over it briefly. And if you need to um, can go back and have questions, how about after this call, I'll go ahead and I'll post the email that I sent you. I'll post it on this group page so you can reference it instead of trying to go back to your email. Um, so I'll just go ahead and post the link to that. You can have us with your note. Everybody ready? Ready. All right, awesome. All right, Claudia, do you want to do the first step? Yes, sure. And then maybe if you guys want to mute yourself, and then um, if you want to throw in comments, then you can unmute that way. Maybe we can eliminate some background noise. Um, so the first thing I want to ask you guys, um, Loris and Sharon, is what sparked your interest in Pamper Chef? Like what made you decide to give Pamper Chef a try? Loris, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, well, Troy is really passionate about everything that she does, it seems like, <laughs> and definitely about um, her Pampered Chef stuff. So um, she was really fun at the party um, that I went to in Korea, and she was awesome during my party as well, And which is strange because it's the first time I'd ever done a virtual anything um, especially like a, a show like that. And I wasn't entirely sure how it was going to work, but it went really smoothly. Everyone was involved. They were interacting. It was a lot of fun. Um, even for my mother-in-law, like everyone from like my mother-in-law to my, my friends had a great time. Um, and it was cool to be able to interact with people from different places. I realized that you know being in Korea and then coming back to the States and having gone to school in a different state than I lived in growing up I have friends in all sorts of different places that I and I have met in different places and one of the first questions that Troy asked was you know how did you how do you know Loris how did you guys meet and I had one friend that was in like Georgia that I had met when I was on a cruise to the Bahamas I had another friend that was in Michigan I had like just people all over the place my sister-in-law's in Florida, my mother-in-law's in Chicago. So um, it was really cool to be able to, to get everybody together and interact like that and kind of have some some fun with it. And also, obviously, she's, she's making money when she does stuff like that too. So you're having fun and making money at the same time. Um, and I realized too, I've been thinking about different um, kind of small businesses that I could possibly do in my spare time. And um, a lot of my friends are doing things like Jamberry or, um, what is it, uh, LuLaRoe leggings and shirts and things like that. And I was 
trying to like just kind of looking at everything and um, trying to see what would be a good fit for me. And for me, it's, it's, I think it's cooking. I think I, I, I enjoy cooking and I get excited when I get stuff for my kitchen. Um, pretty much all of my wedding presents for a kitchen, something or other kitchen related. So I think it will be a, a really good fit for me and my personality. So. Um, do you have a certain amount of money you would like to make any month? I don't know. Um, I just kind of want to see how it goes um, and not, not really set any concrete goals right now for myself. Um, like Troy said, I am pregnant with our second one, so I don't know how that's going to affect me at all. Um, and running around with the little one and doing some other things um, in my personal life. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But I think okay. right now I'm, I'm at home, but I'd like to go back to school. So um, that may take up a lot of time. So I don't know if things will change then. But it seems like something that can kind of change with me. So that's great. Correct. So just something fun to do for right now to keep you busy, right? Okay. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. And then um, Sharon? Yeah. Um, I was really skeptical about it. I went to one of Troy's parties because Troy had been asking me to, to join it for a while. Um, and I didn't want to do it because I didn't want to kind of like ask my family and friends to support me. So I went to the party, um, and it was really good because there was, like, no pressure to buy anything. So I liked that. And people just bought things, like Troy said, like, the products sell themselves. And, like, personally for me, I don't like to cook. I don't eat very healthy either. And I thought this would be a good way for me to start eating healthy and be able to do something legally. So my husband's in the Army, and I don't know, because we're in Osan, there's not really a lot of uh, universities down there. So if I could do this, my goal is to make $1,000 a month. And then I could take care of my daughter, and we'd like to have another kid, so then I wouldn't have to worry about that, and I could take them with me. Like, Troy had Gabriel um, with him at the party. I really like, um, like, I've done my own business before as far as, like, teaching private. I like the control that you have over it, um, and the ability to just, like, do what you want. You can make as much as you want or as little as you want, and it's something I think I would enjoy doing. Okay, great. And, you know, you said the words. It's basically, you know, you get out what you put in right yeah. um okay awesome so the first thing we wanted to go over with you guys is the new consultant rewards program so right now you guys are in a promotional period in your business so um does do you guys both know your 30-day date and your 90-day date no Larissa's is like shaking yes yes yeah I have them. I don't have them here, but they're there. Okay. So, um, <laughs> Troy, can you look those up real quick while I talk, and then maybe we can pull them up at the end? I think my 90-day is the 22nd of December. Okay. Um, so, basically, I'm, I'm, pulling it up. I, I'm pulling it up, but their 90-day dates are – after the um the christmas selling season okay so from now until like the end of the year right okay uh, so those are you want to know those dates those should be like the first two dates that are like big and highlighted in your calendar your first 30 day end date and your first 90 day end date those should be like your first goals um that you want to go for so basically what happens is in your first 90 days you are um eligible to earn paper chef dollars. Paper chef dollars are equal to a dollar, so 100 paper chef dollars basically equals $100. And you can basically go shopping for free um, for catalogs or for extra products that you want, or if you wanna order like little recipe cards, things like that. So it's basically like free money that you earn. So when you earn this money, you don't have to reinvest money in your business. You can use that free money to stock up on catalogs and things like that. So in your first 90 days, you can earn 100 Pampered Chef dollars for every 1250 in sales you submit. So for every $1,250 in sales that you submit in your first 90 days, you get 100 Pampered Chef dollars, okay? Um, and just to give you an idea, when I started, I did 1250 with 
three cooking shows and a catalog show. Okay. So about, you know, three, four shows, or maybe sometimes you have one really good show and get it that way as well. Um, so don't look at it like this is a crazy, you know, it's crazy to sell a thousand dollars in Pimper Chef. It's actually pretty easy. And then you also get a hundred Pimper Chef dollars for every new consultant who joins your team once they do their first 12, 15 sales. Okay, so that's something I kind of want, want you to think about right away. Um, you know, it would be fun if you kind of start with a partner in crime, right? So if you have a friend um, or family member that you're thinking of right away that you're like, oh my God, you know, she loves to cook, this would be for her. Or she's so busy with her kids, she could use some quick, easy dinner recipes and maybe make some money on the site as well. Um, or this lady just lost her job, maybe I should offer her to try out Pamper Chef. So I want you to start thinking about these people right away. And you wouldn't have to worry about training them, like we would still do that for you and help you as well. But sometimes it's just fun to start with a friend and kind of, you know, have a buddy. And then you also get um, a free website for your first 90 days. So if you haven't set up your website yet, you know, go ahead and do that. And we also have an app that you can download, it's called TPC and that's free as well and you can look up contacts with the app you can submit shows and you can look up products okay so whenever you have some time feel free to play around with that um do you guys have any questions about paper chaff dollars and how to earn them after the 90 days can you earn them um yes and no <laughs> So once those 90 days are over, you're not going to earn any more like 100 Pamper Chef dollars. But you earn, you always earn 30 Pamper Chef dollars um, once you recruit someone and they do 12.50, right? So you always earn those, but in your first 90 days, they're going to give you 100. Um, and then sometimes I think they throw us specials and incentives here and there, like certain months. I think, I believe November is we earn paper chaff dollars too, but not, not on a regular basis like you're eligible for in your first 90 days, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so during the first 90 days, you really wanna maximize the amount of PC dollars you can earn because like I said, it's free money. So when I started, I earned about, I earned 400 paper chaff dollars in my first 90 days. I don't know, Charlie, do you remember how many you earned? Mm -hmm. I, I earned 600. So, so she even beat me. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's amazing because it's like free money and you're just like, it kind of gets addicting. Once you get your first 100 and you go and spend it and you're like, oh, I want more of that. And then you're kind of sad when the 90 days are over. <laughs> so um, do you guys have any big items on your wish list? Any big Cranberry Chef products? Not really. I think my biggest item right now i'm really excited about the the um shallow i don't remember what it's called it's a shallow dish that you can like defrost things and microwave bacon and stuff like that and i was telling troy i was like i needed that one like last weekend <laughs> for bacon so are you talking about the deep covered baker the cranberry one with the lid no the new microwave uh the new microwave item Oh, my yeah, I think it's called the shallow bacon. Um, okay. Um, the one that you can microwave bacon in, right? That's the one we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, yeah. Can, you can microwave bacon in there. Okay. <laughs> and what, a, what about you, Sharon? Do you have anything on your wish list? Um, I don't remember what it is, but it was the... Uh, with some kind of baker that you can use in the microwave and the stove top and inside the oven. You're talking about the rock crock, the black rock crock? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That is definitely a one pot wonder right now that everyone needs. Um, so I kind of want you to start thinking about your, you know, products that you might want and also maybe put a dollar amount next to it, right? So rock crock is over a hundred dollars, but if you were to earn, 100 paper chaff dollars that would drop down the price a lot so if you earn 200 paper chaff dollars you could get your rock crock for free right um and in that email we send you it kind of breaks it down for you as well so let's say you sell two thousand five hundred dollars in your first 90 days you're going to earn 200 paper chaff dollars to you know go on a free shopping spree and you're also going to make about 500 to 600 dollars in commission 
So um, that chart in your email breaks it down a little bit and gives you a visual. So you can look at it and be like, okay, I want this many paper chef dollars because I want all these products and I want this much money in my pocket. How much do I need to sell and how am I going to get there? Okay. okay. Do we have any questions about paper chef dollars? No. No? Okay. Charlie, you want to go next? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, guys. So we talked about that, and hopefully you get your wish list ready. Um, so we think about paper chef dollars we can use to buy products that we can use to show in our, in our cooking shows. Those are really important then. So once you have the bigger ticket items, then you can sell those because you have them on hand. So that's an easy way for you to use those. But we're going to move on to, okay, so we, we got our PC dollars. Let's say everyone just had their first PC dollars. So excited. What are we going to do now? We're going to look at our calendar. So whenever, even for your family calendar at home, is that when you look at the whole month at a time, you probably have kids in sports or you have play dates or you have other things. And so what you want to do is you got your new consultant planner um, in your kit. And so you want to look at your calendar and first thing you want to put all your family commitments in your calendar when you look at your month um, and say, okay, I have these dates I have blocked off that I have to use in my prior commitments. And so put those in your calendar first. Um, and then after that, you know, if you have any certain um, training dates and go ahead and pop on your calendar, your 30 day date, your 60 day date, your 90 day date. So you can put that as a goal on your calendar. So this is the goal I'm looking, working towards. So if you have those written down, and you always have it in front of you. So does everyone have their grand party, their, um, their kickoff party all scheduled? Yes. Everyone has that all ready to go, Troy? Got all those booked, excellent. And do you have any other shows in your calendar besides your kickoff party? Does anybody? No, um, I just we have, have one for the kickoff oh. party. Oh. Go ahead, Sharon. I'm sorry. Um, I guess I have one online, but it's the same as the kickoff party. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And so with Larice, we haven't scheduled an, like a home party for her, but her kit just arrived yesterday. So now she's in a position to be able to put that together, and that'll be part. She and I are going to have an offline conversation shortly, so that'll be part of our conversation, too. Okay. Tip out a kitchen table and come with that kit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We've all been there. <laughs> We've all been there. All right, so excellent. So once you have your calendar for the month, so go ahead and pop all those dates on there. And um, when you're going through your calendar, when you first start, it's really important um, that you get comfortable. Any, like when you start anything new, how do you get better at it? With repetition, correct? And so, and so you want to get as many shows as you can um, in your first 30 days. And then 60 days, because um, then you get comfortable. You want to have a six to eight shows like scheduled, so then you get comfortable, either virtual shows or live cooking shows. Live cooking shows, and you practice talking to people, which is really important um, that you're comfortable. And so those can, you know, just ask your family, friends, or you're meeting people, that your excitement is who they will book with. And so when you're looking at your calendar, um, that you want to have the you know, get those first six shows in 30 days is really your optimum um, number. Um, so is your go big goal to look for. And another reason to do that is to maximize 100 PC dollars, right? And so if we have more shows, then we can earn more money and get more products free. And then, you know, we all love free products. We all want free money back. So if we have those six shows. And so how would we, how would we get those six shows? And we have any ideas? Anybody? All right. All right. So let's think about what kind of, um, so if we have our six shows in our 30 days, and so how are we going to, how are we going to book those? How are we going to put that on our calendar? So let's think of um, 30 days. So we're going to go over, um, so you can either either talking to people, and um, so who who here is scared of talking to people to uh, to book for shows? Anybody? Yeah, I kind of. Yeah. Well, I was, and I, I I'll tell you, you know, like that I was, yeah, everybody, 
it's not just you. It's like no one has this magic pill. I wish I could just pull out my pocket and just give you all the bookings you wanted and you didn't ever have to talk to anybody. Wouldn't that be awesome? And we'd be like, oh, that's, that's so cool, you know? And then you have like a whole outline. But unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. And I really wish it did. Um, so it's just practice. Practice talking to people. And if you don't have the right words to say, that just talking about Pampered Chef and their products and then you can say, hey, I'm Charlie. Nice to meet you. Um, you heard of, you know, did you ever talk about whatever your play day? So, oh, look at that equipment. Just talk about whatever and, you know, maybe have a nice snack in your pocket or a nice snack in your lunchbox, you know, and maybe use the fruit and cheese cut as your snack. It's like, oh, look at that. You're so cute. You know, is that a bento box? What? You know, just want to talk about whatever. And then he's like, oh, no, what's Pampered Chef? Didn't you know? And they're like, oh, what Pampered Chef? You know, and then you have a mini catalog in your purse. You pull a catalog out, you know. But the important thing we want you to remember, though, when you're first, when you're first starting, not only – pass your name out to people. We want to get those contacts. Um, so when you give someone a catalog, don't just give them a catalog because that's money out of your pocket. You want to get their contact information and you want to get their name, their phone number, their email, you know, at least their email and name. So you have that um, information. So then you can add that to your contact list um, on your webpage. And so then you have, you're building that contact list. And so I remember that. So whenever you're giving someone a catalog, everyone wants a catalog. We all love, we love to shop. We all, we, everyone does. And if it's an opportunity catalog, you're, you're going to take it and make sure you get their name and their information back. So you're not just throwing money out the window and that you're getting something in return. And most people say, sure, I don't mind. So anyway, I know that Claudia and I, this is a, something I struggle with personally. And so um, that you put a little yellow sticky note on your catalog. And, and so then you remember, oh, you know, it's a blank. I need to fill that sticky note. And so then we have it filled up. And you're like, oh, yeah. You know, is, is it a little reminder? So we have any questions about that? Anything? Any questions so far? Claudia, you know, you mentioned the sticky note. Claudia, do you have one of your packs available? Like, I actually made to just to just show do you have one of your packs nearby? You're muted. No, I have mine in the car. But basically, um, here, let me grab. It's basically what you can do. You know, we don't want to go fancy and pick out a big packet. Basically, it's just a mini catalog. And right now, you might not have those. So if you want to use big catalogs for now, you know, you can. But that's even more important. If you're using big catalogs, those, you know, cost more money than these little ones. And put a sticky note on there, just like this. It doesn't have to be fancy. And that way, you're less likely to just hand them a catalog because you, you want to be like, oh, and by the way, if you, you know, do you have a Pamper Chef consultant? Oh, you don't? You know, I would love to add you to my newsletter and send you some fabulous recipes we just came out with this month or something along the line. And so at least they write down the name, email, and phone number, and you follow up. And I kid you not, if you don't get their information, it's not because they don't like you, but most people go home, you know, I have a big pile of stuff here. I just throw it on there and then I forget about it. Okay. So that's what happens. But if we follow up with them, like, Hey, did you get a chance to look through the catalog? Um, you know, and ask them questions, then you have a new contact. All right, so before um, we move on to our next point, um, let's talk about um, you want to ha have six to eight to seven in your first 30 days. You have to, so you, let's say that you, the magic theory, you have all those shows in your calendar. Now let's think about what's going to happen. Let's say someone's kid got sick, or we have uh, something changed in our work calendar, their husband's schedule change. Because we're all in the army, most of you know, our husbands might be in the army, they have duty or something. Something's going to change in our calendar. So they call you up and say, well, Charlie, I've got to cancel. You know, I can't do that. And so you have to plan on that, okay? And so if you want to have six shows in your calendar, you might want to book eight. Or if you want to you want to, you have six, more than that, you're probably going to have four. And so you just plan on that and be prepared. And don't get your feelings hurt because it's just going to happen. We'll cancel, and it's nothing personal to you. 
Um, they're not being mean to you. It's just what it is, what it is. Um, but we need to make sure when they do cancel, you know, don't just say, oh, okay. You just say, okay, well, this, what, what, what works for you? How can we schedule that show? Um, so anyway, so just work through that. And so you know, if you want to have a certain number of shows in your calendar, maybe book a couple more than what you want. So then if they cancel, then you're, you still have those number of shows that you get on your calendar. And then each one, um, we will, we have a, I'll try to follow up with you after each of your shows so that we can talk about it and see how comfortable you are. Okay. Everyone ready? All right. So I think Claudia is next to help you walk through the Frank's list and um, try to figure out who we can um, have shows with and how to build up our contacts. Um, can I just add real quick, um, Loris and Sharon, how many shows would you guys like to have in your first 30 days? If I had like a bag full of bookings, how many shows would you like from this bag in your first 30 days? Um, I think I could probably handle six shows in the first 30 days. Okay. And Sharon? Uh, Um, to be honest, probably other than my kickoff, I don't know if I'll have any unless people book it because I am working full time and I don't have legal permission to do this in Korea yet. So I don't want to get my husband in trouble or anything. Okay. Could you do like virtual parties or catalog parties with family in the virtual States? Parties. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Do that. Okay. Um, so now if you have a um, notebook and a pen, I want you, we're gonna brainstorm some people and we're gonna brainstorm and we're just gonna write down the first name that comes to our mind. We're not gonna like prejudge and we're not gonna like think about it too much. If you don't know their name, it could just be, you know, the lady at the post office or the lady down the street, the lady with the red hair and the two dogs, okay? So don't overthink it, okay? So the first category, category that I want you to write down is I want you to list five friends. Um, who's your best friend? Who's an old friend? Who's a friend from high school? Who's a friend from your last duty station? So just write down five names that pop into your head. And then the next category is going to be relatives. So I want you to list five relatives. It can be anyone living close by, anyone far away, um, cousins, brothers, siblings, aunts, whatever, whoever you want to think of. <laughs> Sharon's typing away. <laughs> That's good. I like it. Okay. The third category is going to be associates. And it's going to be anyone you might know through your work, um, anyone that you do business with. So your hairdresser, your nail lady, the lady at the post office, the lady at the bank, any organizations you're part of for churches, um, FRGs, Boy Scout, Girl Scout, school, anything like that. Okay, next one's going to be neighbors. Who lives on your right? Who lives on your left? Who lives down the street? Who lives across the street? Who lives upstairs? <laughs> if you're in Korea, or downstairs. <laughs> and like I said, you don't have to know their names, right? Mm 
Next one is going to be um, kids, if you have kids. So it could be anyone, you know, through your kids, playgroups, schools, parent groups. Lorise, we just talked about tumbling classes, right? <laughs> And then last category is going to be spouse or significant other, anyone you know through them or th their work or, you know, their side of the family or their friends. Okay, so how many people were you able to add to your list? Nineteen. Okay. Sharon? Ten? Is that what you said, ten? Okay. 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 So we might want to try and add a couple more for you, Sharon. Um, it's kind of important to have at least three names in each category, so for a total of about 18, because usually one in three will say yes to hosting a show, okay? So that means if you connect to 18 of your leads, you have a good chance of getting your six bookings, okay? So um, keep thinking about that, and maybe we can add some more people to that. And now what I want you to do is I want you to prioritize your list by assigning each person a letter. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put an A next to anyone who will absolutely host a show for you. If you're like, if I tell her, you know, sometimes you have those friends where you're like, girlfriend, guess what? You're gonna have a party <laughs> and you're gonna invite your friends over. That's just gonna happen. So just put an A next to anyone who you think will absolutely host a show. And this includes for um, for virtual parties too, right? Correct. Virtual party, free Zumba workshops, catalog parties, Facebook parties, yeah. Um, and then you're going to put a B next to anyone who you think will host a show. You're not 100% sure, but you're pretty sure that they will. So a B next to anyone who you think will host a show. And then we're going to put a C next to anyone who you are afraid to call or afraid <laughs> to ask. You're like, I don't know about this lady. Oh, yeah. oh, I thought, I've got class in 10 minutes, so I have to go and get my stuff and go to class. Okay, we're recording this, so you can just come back later and finish it if you want. Okay. Thank you, Sharon. Bye. Bye, Sharon. Bye. See you later, Sharon. Loris, it's all on you now. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and call all your A's first and get their show scheduled, right? Because they're going to book a party for you. So the next group you will want to call are your C's. 
not your B's, your C's. And here's why. You aren't expecting them to say yes, right? <laughs> so these are your practice calls. So you can kind of practice, um, you know, with your words and kind of build up your confidence. And you're going to hear a lot of no's. People will say no. Um, but by making these calls first, not only are you going to get more comfortable hearing no, but you're also going to learn how to respond when you hear no. Okay. So your first no, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, she hates me. Right. And the second no, you're going to be like, okay, just move on to the next person. Right. <laughs> so, um, it just kind of helps you boost your confidence. Um, so it's sometimes it's fun to kind of change the mindset a little bit and go for no's, no's versus going for yes. So you could be like, I want to hear 10 no's today. I want 10 people to tell me no, right? So that kind of changes your mindset. I actually, I, I used to do that a lot. And it helps because I'd be like, no, I'm going to call until I get this 15 no's in. Um, and then when someone says yes, you're like, gosh, darn it. <laughs> so, you know, that kind of helps for sure. Um, and that kind of helps you get more bookings as well. So we want to help you with words to say and what to say. So you're not just like, hey, do you want to have a party? Right? So we want to make it fun and exciting. Um, Charlie, do you want to go over the words? Yes, I'll go over the words. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. So here is an idea for words to say. So um, I know this is one thing that I really struggled with. And um, as you can see, I actually have my phone right here. And this is what I would actually do. I would read, the, and I still do. I still actually follow a script when I call someone because I get really nervous. And I really hate calling people to this day. And so whenever I do, I, I follow a script and I read the most exact words and just make sure when it says in a certain name, they don't say in a certain name. And that'd be really embarrassing. And so just make sure you put their real names, put their name. And so when I'm making these calls, I actually write the person's name next to that. And I have a pencil and I write it in a pencil so I can actually read it myself. Um, so here is a choice of words that you could say. Um, we already went over before how you have a, you know, the, the um, mini catalog you're talking about in a conversation just comes up. So that's just the natural flowing thing that you could just be meet someone. So let's go. Um, whenever you we, we meet someone, is that you could say, "Hi, I just became a consultant with the Pampered Chef, and my goal is to schedule six right six shows in my thirty days, and I would love for you to be one of them." Would you be willing to gather four to eight of your friends together for a fun party? And in return, you will get to take advantage of our generous host program. What do you think? So that's not too bad, right? And you just, I just, I read that literally right off my phone. So it's that easy. We have all these tools for you that tell you what to say, okay? And so who knows that our, you could say, another, here's another example of words you could say. Our host program is amazing. Let me share with you what it will sound like when you brought in our host program. Again, you talk about the host program. What are they going to get? What, what, is, what does the host get? What? Free. So you talk about free. Talk about what excites you. So if free excites you or a discount excites you, talk about that. You know, you forget everything else you're supposed to say. Just talk about that. And so, and that's what will get a host excited too. And so, great. So you talk to someone, you've got the date in the calendar, and um, they said, yes, I would love to, Larice. I would love to help you. So next, you want to get a, set a time and a date on your calendar. You want to get that date on the calendar. Now, we already talked about earlier, it might change, right? It might cancel or something else. You want to get that date on the calendar. It can always change later on, but at least get the date on the calendar. And you can go over different options, you know, and, but you want to make, when you're doing your over your date, that um, you're in control of that because it's your business. And so, um, so it might be helpful whenever we talked about earlier and going over your calendar, that you pick dates in your calendar that you want to have shows, that you already know your dates. And so whenever they say that, then you could say, oh, well, yeah, I have next Tuesday or I have, how about this day? And give them maybe a couple options of dates. 
and then and then have them pick one of those. And so you are in control of your shows, you're in control of your calendar. So you you have your dates and you give them and you can say, let's look at the available dates in your calendar. You should try to schedule your party. Excuse me. See, this is what happens. I get excited I'm talking. I forget to follow my script. See, this is what happens. This is real world. This is real. Just kidding. <laughs> so I do the exact same things. So, um, so you, 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 you're, so as you're going off your checklist, you get your shows, your six shows booked, you're talking to people, you're getting, you're getting their shows on your calendar. So I talked about, you give them options, you know, talk about a few dates and if none of your dates that you give them work, then, you know, it's your business. And so you just work with the date and what works for them at a time, um, and recognize what, how did you meet them if they're a stay at home mom? Eat, and then it may be during the evening time or daytime, depending on the age of their kids. And so um, it may be even when you look at your calendar, okay, you know, these days my husband has duty or these days he's gone, those evenings won't work. And so anyway, just as that tips for you to looking at your times and dates of your shows. And you also want to look at, since we're most of us are in the military, look at payday schedules as well when looking at your shows is that you want to have – and that is a big, big factor. Um, when you're having your show and when you're closing your show, make sure that's around a payday period um, most of the time. And that is you know, so a factor in your factor as well. If you have one mid-month, then it's probably you're going to have to wait till the next, you know, whatever. So this is another factor for you. Don't be discouraged whenever someone is delaying closing a show. This is probably more than likely what it is. So here is a sentence, um, hey, to close the date. Let's see, and I'm sorry, I cannot read that. So we have gone over um, however, how to close a show and how to book a show. Loris, does that sound like something that sounds easy for you to do? Yeah. Okay. Right, would you like to practice or would you like to do that? Maybe you can practice with Troy. That be I'll, pra I'll practice with Troy. Yeah, I... I Probably will come up with my own script and kind of run it by her and make sure it's not okay. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so yeah, we're just, um, we're here but tonight. We're just going over our basic training just to help you feel comfortable. Um, <laughs> so it's not so overwhelming to you. Um, so, it's, so everyone's not going to say no. Everyone's not going to say yes. And, you know, and it's like, it is what it is. And it's not everything personal and you just move on. But what, I'm sorry, my dog and my son are wrestling next to me. Um, <laughs> and so if they say no, uh, you know, no big deal. And so don't be disheartened and say, okay, that's fine. That's great. You know, thank you so much. You, you can get their contact information and so you can say, do you have a current, you know, Pamper Chuck consultant? I would love to put you on my email list. And get their and get their you know information, or you say, okay, oh, well, thank you so much for listening. And do you have a friend maybe that you know that you know less pampered chef? And so instead of just saying no and walking away, that maybe get their contact information added to your contact list, or um, do you know do you know of someone else who'd be interested in pampered chef? Because I would really love to get my business going on a strong start. And so yeah, and just sort of and if they say sure, I have somebody like oh no, I don't at this time. Okay, well, thank you so much. You know, I would say thank you. And just, you know, um, right now my boys are in Cub Scouts and we're getting ready to sell popcorn. So we're going over the exact same thing. I always say thank you when everyone says no and just say thank you and move on. You know, the smile and whatever, you know. And it's nothing personal to you and just, you know, don't take it that way. So someone will say no. And what if, what if she is like, oh, I'm busy. I have kids at home. I work full time. Okay. Well, great. One thing about Pampered Chef is that we know everyone thinks you have to have a lot a cooking show in person. But someone says, I'm busy, I have kids or whatever, and say, you know what, that's what I love about Pampered Chef. You can have a party online. We can have a virtual show. You can have a catalog show. Or you know, if you have a – but your biggest night is going to be a real cooking show. But you could say, you know what, I make it so easy for you. How about we set a date, we set a time. And how about I do everything else and you just invite your friends. And so just, you know, keep on talking about the, you know, how easy it is. Um, 
So does that sound pretty reasonable? Do you have any questions so far, Larisse? I, I actually have something that I say that I feel like um, also is helpful, like when, when people say that they're busy. And I say, you know what? I said, I say that's perfect. I said, I say busy, busy people actually make my best hosts um, because you probably know other people that are really busy and you also know how to organize your time in a way that actually gets everything done that needs to get done way better than other, than other people might. And I have um, shortcuts that can help such busy people in the kitchen and have time around the dinner table that they may not have in their home today. So busy people are my favorite people to work with. That's very good. That's really good, Troy. That's a really good point. So Troy, how do you handle objections? What was that? How do you handle objections? Someone says, oh no, what do you do? Um, if it's if they just say you know no now's not a good time you know what can I can I contact you again in a month and see if things open up on your calendar and you know they might say you know what next month is gonna be crazy but go ahead and, and contact me in November whatever it is All right, excellent, excellent. or they might say you know what I'm just not a party person I don't want to do shows you know what? I get that. I, customers are super important. We couldn't do this business without customers. But let me know, do you know anyone that might want all of these discounts? Or who do you not more? I, I'd actually prefer to say, who do you know that would love all these discounts? And maybe then you can go to a party at her house and you could be a customer there. Excellent. All right. Awesome. And this is why Troy's doing what she's today. doing. She's rocking it. <laughs> I'm learning exactly. so. that Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so we're almost done. We have a couple more points. And so um, I've, I've actually put together some, we have some of our notes that we're following that have common things that you can say to people whenever they say no. And I think I'll post that on this link as well. Um, so you have your script that you can just you can look at. Um, and so we'll post a script that has words you can say. Um, there's actually a, a whole training program on the Pamper Tech webpage that has these for you. Um, so these aren't things that you have to write down all of them because they're we have them on paper for you written down. Um, so I think that next um, that Claudia is going to go over the um, the host um, the host plan. Correct. Um, so, of course, you know, as you're getting people to book shows, you want to make sure that you are familiar with our host rewards program and why people love to have Pimper Chef parties, right? Because we reward them with a huge free shopping spree and amazing discounts, not only for their party, but also for the, you know, for the upcoming parties that are booked from them and for the whole rest of the year. So um, you turned your virtual party into your launch party. Is that what happened, right? Sorry, yes. Yeah. Um, so Troy and I are working together um, to switch, I guess, all of that over. We haven't finished it yet yeah, tonight. Yeah. Okay, okay, good. So you're going to see that with your first party, you're going to experience what a Paper Chef host experiences, okay? So when you look at the, um, let me grab a catalog. When you look at the back of your catalog, oops, somewhere, um, when you look at the back of your catalog right here, are all your yeah. hostess rewards, okay? So we wanna make sure that you are familiar with these. And when you look at them, you'll notice, of course, the more the host sells, right? The higher the sales are at the show, the more free products to get, the more half price items to get, and the higher the discount is on the whole catalog, okay? Uh, which one of the really good benefits that not I don't know who else does it, but not a lot of other direct selling companies do, is that once you picked your free shopping spree, once you picked your half price items, the host still gets a discount on the whole catalog, like no restriction, right? So if she wants to order the whole catalog, she can. Um, 
So it's really the best way to stock up on Pampered Chef. And then um, these combos here are our um, host exclusive half price combos. So they can use um, some of the half price items or all of the half price items for these combos that are only available for hosts. Okay. Um, and that's why you always want to encourage your hosts, you know, to have sales in before the party, sales at the party, and then sales after the party from the people who couldn't come, right? So we want happy hosts. We don't want someone that barely makes a party and then they're going to be upset and they're not going to refer you, right? If you have a happy host that you just give them a $200 free shopping spree and they're excited, they're going to rebook with you every six months or once a year and they're going to refer you to their party. Okay, so that's something that it took me a while to understand that now I look at it more as, you know, when we talk to a host, it's more like a encouraging them, like a host encouraging versus a host coaching. They don't know how to throw the perfect party, right? They don't know. They don't know how to throw the perfect pamper chef party, but we know. So it's our job for us to teach them how to do that. So that that's what we're supposed to be doing. Not just like, okay, you have a party next month. Okay, I'll show up at 6.30. I'll talk. I'll see you then, right? So it's our goal to help them have the perfect party. Um, so you, when you close your first party, you're going to realize that, oh, wow, I get this and I get that for free. Oh, and what, sometimes I have to tell my host, like, you still have $50 to spend. Like, come on, I need something else that you want for free. So um, that is why people want parties. They want the free stuff. If you do parties and you ask people who's hosted a party before, what was your favorite thing? 99% of the time, it's free paper chef stuff. Okay? It's literally free shopping space. So we want to make sure that you are familiar with what you're trying to sell, right? Not only are we selling products, we're also selling people the host program so they book parties. Do you have any questions about the program and how it works? Okay. Um, and also something that is really cool too is so let's say your host A, right? Let's say Charlie has a party and then Troy books a party at Charlie's, right? She's like, I want to have my own party too, right? So what happens is Charlie can go to Troy's party and get another half price item. So your host is going to keep on saving at her friend's party because the friends came to her party. She's going to support their party, but at least now she gets another half price item. Like how cool is that? Right? So we average about two to three bookings at parties. The host is going to keep on saving, but like, Oh, and next month I'll get that for half price. And in October I'll get that. And then when Becky has her party in November, I'm going to give me that rock rock. And she just kind of makes her wish list for the next couple months. Okay. So that's a very cool thing. And the host gets 10% off for a whole year. And that's not just through you. That's, um, it's attached to the email. So whatever email you use when you set up their party, that's the email that their 10% discount is attached to. So right now with the outlet, like going crazy and these amazing sales, whoever's hosted a party in the last year, and it might not have been through you, but maybe they've hosted through someone and lost touch with the consultant, they still get 10% off that sales price. So that's why people are freaking out right now. Because <laughs> they, they, I have people ask me, they're like, do I get my 10% off of that? And I'm like, yes, go get it now before it's sold out. Um, so awesome. Okay, so no questions about the program? Okay, Charlie, you want to give her her call to action? Okay, so we are uh, just about finished. And um, so we've talked about uh, a whole bunch of things tonight. We've gone over, we're going to do in your first 30 days. We've gone over um, how to call people, um, how to make a list of who to call. And um, so we have your list made. And so in the next, so you have your whole list. And so you want to have six shows. So do you have a time in the day that you are able, available to call? So on your notebook that you write your people down, look at your schedule and say, okay, in the next 48 hours, what times do I have available to call? And just write them down. If you have a certain time, so then if you write it down, that's, that's like your calendar 
and you're, you're telling yourself, okay, these are my times I'm going to call. These are my quote unquote working hours that I'm going to get in the phone and I'm going to call. And so that's your homework is to, um, is to do your best. The next 48 hours is to book your next six shows and to go through your list of your A, B, and C people, even the C that you don't really want to call, but you know, just, you know, just put yourself out there and it gets easier with each phone call. So that's your, that's your homework and to keep a, a notebook. Um, you made your list of contacts and to keep a log of who you called. Um, and just, you know, check a check mark or if you left a message or if you actually talked to them in person and to keep that next to that and have your long book of who I call. That's always good to, for me personally. And I have a checklist and I get to put a check next to it. It feels awesome. It feels amazing. And so you're doing this to yourself. You're making your list and you're making yourself feel awesome by checking it, um, making a check off. And the next thing, so we have two, those are your two homework items. And the third one is that we're going to schedule a follow-up phone call with um, everyone on the Newcomb team that will have a, a follow-up and that we'll go over um, the phone calls and our contacts and our inner shows that we booked. Okay. That's good. Awesome. So I think we lost Troy. <laughs> so it was a pleasure to meet you, Larice, and uh, to spend this time with you and uh, whoever else in the Newcomb team listens to our recordings. I know everybody will. And, um, and I look forward to uh, seeing your, your success and your Pampered Chef journey. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you for joining. We look forward to seeing you soon.